So here I am, I turn over in bed, and just like you know any other deer hunter that has cell cams, first thing I do is I roll over and I check my phone to see what moved that night. My jaw hit the bed. I could not believe what I was seeing. It was the biggest deer that I have ever seen on the hoof, the biggest deer that I have ever had on camera, and a deer that I had no idea was anywhere near this farm. And I don't know why, but I had this feeling that it was just definitely my year to see some big deer. Is coming. Right us. And all of a sudden, Austin taps me. He's like, big buck, big buck. Don't know what buck it is, but big buck. Victory Outdoors, proudly presented by Expedition Archery. So as most of you know, the last couple deer seasons have been a roller coaster of emotions. The, uh, the last big deer I shot was actually the big nine and it was on film and I was so, I was so ecstatic. That was clear back in 2018. It's hard to think that it was that long ago. And then 2019, I just, I had one of the roughest seasons I've ever had. I didn't have much to chase. I was losing properties left and right. I was low on hunting as a whole. I just, I didn't know what to do. So today's kind of a sad day for me. I've been uh, hunting this farm since I was about 10 years old. And due to the older couple that owned it passing away and there being so many kids involved, they decided to sell it. Um, all of us over here at Victory Outdoors, none of us own our own ground. We're just, you know, we're the normal guys. We just ask permission and people are gracious enough to let us hunt their ground. And it's part of it. You lose it, you gain it, just to lose it all over again. All you can do is you can give the landowner the utmost respect every time that you're on their ground. And hopefully they allow you on a second year or the third year and a fourth year and so on and so on. So I actually have three tree stands in here that we're gonna pull today and I just picked up another farm about a quarter mile from here and hopefully tomorrow we're gonna throw them up in there and hopefully have the same quality of deer over there that we did here because this this spot really produced for me in the last you know 14 years so stay tuned hopefully you know we can bring you some action from there So 2020 season, I kind of went back to the drawing board and I was kind of like, gonna go back to my roots. And just, I didn't run cameras as hard. I wasn't as motivated. And then uh, as most of you know, with COVID, I lost my job. And that really put me in kind of a depression and hunting was kind of the way that I got out of it. And I don't know why, but I had this feeling in 2020 that it was just definitely my year to see some big deer. One of the things that I like to do every summer is I like to wait till the weather kind of cools down, wait till the evening here and get some practice in. And one of the biggest things that I do to practice is I shoot 3D archery tournaments. And I've been fortunate enough that I, I've shot really well in some and I've won some and lost quite a few. So, but it's all in good fun. The biggest reason I kind of got into it was uh, to help me get better at guessing yardage. You know, sometimes you just don't have time to pull your rangefinder out. You go out to a 3D course and you have to guess what yardage that target is. And it's not life and death at that point, or it's it's not in the heat of the moment. You just guess, and if you were a little wrong, you, sh you know for next time that maybe it was a little further, maybe it was a little closer. It's definitely helped me out and I haven't missed since.
This segment is brought to you by HuntStand. Twenty twenty comes around and I start hunting this farm. I knew that early I wasn't gonna have a very good opportunity. But I knew as soon as the rut hit that this farm was just gonna light up with the way that the crops lined up. So I waited till Halloween weekend and I decided to go hunt this farm. November first will it be a day that I will never forget because this deer that I've been watching grow for three years finally pops out of the brush and man was he a true Iowa giant. I haven't seen a deer yet. I do a little bit of a rattling. And maybe there's just a, not a whole lot of deer in here, but I know I've had good bucks in here, including this morning, so. Hopefully one of these big boys comes out and gives me a shot. So that first night he didn't produce, he just didn't give me a good shot opportunity. He was within my bow range, but he just, I wanted him to be a little closer. I don't like taking those longer shots. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. And I knew that he was gonna stay on that farm for several days. So the second night that we had an encounter with this deer, I rattled at him. And as you know, these older deer, they're way smarter than us. Brady's coming. He went and he went directly downwind and he went directly into a creek bottom to where I couldn't see him. Ian kept getting glimpses of him, but he went directly downwind and he busted us before we knew it. So the next day we actually moved our stand location to a different spot and that's where we had this awesome encounter with him, breeding a doe, 100 yards, just one of those magical evenings that you very rarely see in the Iowa deer woods. Unfortunately he just didn't produce a, produce a good shot opportunity and his doe must have came out of heat and he just kind of quit showing up after that. I had a few reveal pictures of him after that, but not too many. So here I am, I turn over in bed, and just like you know any other deer hunter that has cell cams, first thing I do is I roll over and I check my phone to see what moved that night. My jaw hit the bed. I could not believe what I was seeing. It was the biggest deer that I have ever seen on the hoof, the biggest deer that I have ever had on camera, and a deer that I had no idea was anywhere near this farm. I ran cameras in there all year, and I, I had no idea that this deer existed, but I did not know how much this deer would swallow my life for the next week. Well, I wasn't gonna hunt today. I was gonna take the day off. I spent the last four days chasing a really good deer on one of my farms. Oh, Paul, the biggest deer I've had on camera since 2015. Never seen him before. Nothing is three miles away from my house. And Jason does at 7.45. So I'm sitting there in the tree stand thinking to myself, this deer's never gonna show back up. It was a one-time thing. I missed my opportunity. Next thing I know, I look over and it was the sign that I needed. Here comes this 150 inch 10 pointer that I had had pictures of that I thought was gonna be the biggest deer on this farm. And here he comes out at 35 yards, gives me a shot opportunity. And I decided not to take it just because I knew that this bigger deer was around 
And if this deer was going to give me an opportunity now, I figured he'd give me an opportunity later. And I wanted an opportunity to see this deer on the hoof. This segment is brought to you by Element Outdoors. So a few mornings later, I ended up moving my tree stand with my dad. I didn't like where it was at. I was kind of buried inside the draw. And if the deer were gonna come out in this backfield, I wanted to be able to be in the wide open. So I decided that I was gonna go there. The couple mornings later, I let it settle. And the, my reveal that was right there, it was still getting pictures of a lot of deer. So I knew I didn't disturb the area too much. And lo and behold, I must have walked right by this deer on my way in because I just barely get my camera equipment set up. I barely put an arrow on the bow. Here this deer is, 100 yards. And I, I was in utter disbelief. I could not believe that a deer of this magnitude was in my area and that I might have an opportunity to really hunt this deer. So my good buddy Austin, I'd been talking to him about this deer and I sent him the pictures and he said, I want an opportunity to sit in this tree with you to see if we can't p capture this deer on film and hopefully get an opportunity at him. Set up where I got this mega giant. I had an encounter with him last week. I haven't seen him since and I got pictures of him. We're just gonna see how the morning unfolds and hopefully we get some chase action from us. So we barely get set up that night or that morning and I tap him and I say, hey, there he is. So I tried to grunt at him. I tried snort wheezing at him. I got his, I got his attention, but he wasn't leaving his dough for anything. So at that point, I knew that that dough was hot and I maybe had a couple days and that was it. After that, he probably was gonna disappear just as fast as he showed up. So that evening, we ended up getting halfway the encounter that we wanted. Unfortunately, the encounter didn't end the way that we would have liked to, but that's why they call it hunting. This deer, I feel very fortunate that I had the opportunity to hunt this deer. And who knows, maybe the story isn't written yet. So that buck pretty much consumed the rest of my 2020 season. And it, still to this day, I'll tell anybody that is the best season of bow hunting that I've ever had in my life. And I, I went out of it with a tag unfilled. This segment is brought to you by Reveal by Tacticam. So 2021 comes around and I started running the cameras hard again. I wanted to get after that big deer again. And he didn't show back up, unfortunately. But the deer that I had passed in the 2020 season, he showed back up and he was a true Iowa Magnum. I had him and actually Austin that filmed my big deer, he, uh, he named him Hot Sauce because he just kept getting hotter every time that you saw him. And then I had a deer that I called Private Joker because he has a kind of a peace sign in his rack, which was really cool. And he wasn't as quite of a regular as Hot Sauce on the, on the farm. 
I had some trail camera pictures of him, but not, not as many as hot sauce. Well, it's the morning of October 30th. Those of you that are good friends with the team, you know that Ian's getting married today. So how do I celebrate I'm in a tree? This is a perfect pinch point in between bedding area. Got two food sources. There's a bean field to our east, and there's an alfalfa field south. So we're just hoping that something's cruising up through here. I had pictures of a really nice buck about five yards away from this tree on Monday, so we're just gonna sit here and sit back and hope. We got the antlers, we got the asterisk, we got everything out this morning, so the stand's a little crooked, but other than that, I think we're in for a good set. We found the tree stand, we got up in there, and it was kind of a slow morning. It, we had one little buck come through, and then in the blink of an eye, right when I was kind of getting down and deciding whether I wanted to get down to go get ready for Ian's wedding and all that stuff, our luck changed completely. And all of a sudden, Austin taps me. He's like, big buck, big buck. Don't know what buck it is, but big buck. I was like, okay. So I'm, I'm asking him where he's at. You know, I'm assuming this deer's 50 yards away. And I get spun around and looking straight up at me is Private Joker. And at the time, I didn't even know what deer it was. And then the sun gleamed right off of his face just right. And I saw that white face and there was just no mistaking this deer. So at this time, I think I'm busted. I'm mid-turn with my bow, trying to get my feet wrapped around the tree. This is the, the exact situation that bow hunters don't wanna be in. And I just froze. And all of a sudden, he just kind of put his head down and he just started walking right like nothing ever happened. I don't know how he didn't see me, but this deer, I, it was just meant to be on this day. So he comes in just as beautiful as can be on a trail that I set this tree stand up to shoot. 15 yard shot, couldn't be any more perfect. I make the shot count and we actually watched him go down on the creek bank. one of the best hunts that I have ever been on. It was zero to 100 in a matter of seconds, and in a matter of a minute, it was all done, and my season had been worth it. It's been about 35 minutes since I shot this buck. I can't contain my excitement anymore. We watched him crash right here on the edge of the creek. Not even gonna look at the arrow. He looked like he was still moving about three or four minutes after I shot. So we're just gonna sneak up there real slow and make sure I don't have to put another one in it. But that shot looked great, so I'm not too worried. I was a little worried about him still being alive, but he ain't. He's laying right there and he is done. This has been a long time coming right here. <laughs> I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. Dude, this is a this is a five and a half year old, six and a half year old buck right here, man. His stud. Been rubbing this morning. 
Got all kinds of extras off of his bases here. I didn't even see in the pictures. That deer's a stud. Deer is an absolute stud. I'm really happy to wrap my tag around this deer here. Really happy. At the end of the 2021 season, I couldn't be happier on the way that it ended. And through all the trials and tribulations of the last couple years, I've learned so many good lessons. And I kind of think to myself that that's why they call it hunting and not kill. This is why we do it. It's so difficult to outsmart these mature whitetails in their own element. And you have to work at it. If it was easy, anybody could do it. If it was easy, we'd all get bored and we'd just quit doing it. Uh, these year after year success stories, sometimes they are feasible and sometimes they're not. Depending on the ground that you hunt, depending on whether you're hunting public ground, private ground, just know that every season could change within a matter of 30 seconds. Always stay there, always be in the moment, and make sure to shoot straight.